Hi there, this is Anna from Anna Aspinus Designs. Welcome back to a brand new video. This one is going to be about the Art Play Moira collection, which you can see on my screen. It comes with an Art Play palette, a template, some stitched frames, and some postage frames that coordinate with one another. And they actually also coordinate with the linear photo blends from the Art Play Sachet collection. And then of course we have the coordinating word art, which you can then mix and match to create your own artistry papers. So I'm going to start with a bit of background and story behind this collection. And I'm also going to talk about the artsy transfers and how you can combine the coordinating artsy transfers with the Art Play palette collection. Then going to move on and we'll deconstruct this tulip layout by Mikey, who has incorporated mainly the Art Play palette with the Artsy transfers, and then she's added in a few other components from different Art Play palette collections. So, this particular collection was really born out of a need for me to have more green in my life. Green to me is synonymous with being lucky, being au naturel in the outdoors and I suppose these more somber mossy muted hues are very indicative of England which of course is my my home country where I was born and raised and it also has a lot of seasonal inspiration in there of course we're in the month of April and certainly in Europe and the west coast of the United States it can tend to be gloomy and rainy and those gray skies can be prevalent at this time of year. I find that these muted hues are really good for travel photos and landscapes, heritage pages, and really any of your photos that have green in them. And of course, if you needed to bump up the saturation of these supplies, then you could easily do that by using the hue and saturation tool. And I will demonstrate that as we get further into this video. So the initial inspiration came from this photo and I actually posted this on my Instagram account, which is Anna Aspinus. It was a photo that I saw on Goop, posted on Goop of the Scottish Highlands. Of course, my family now live in Scotland, so I'm very familiar with this sort of landscape. And it wasn't my intention to build a palette that had these sort of hills in them, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. It was really just the colors that I was drawn to. And you'll notice that I asked a question here and I, I held a poll. I also posted this over in the fans Facebook group. And it was a definite yes to create a collection in this color palette. So I went ahead and set about with the Art Play palette. And of course, the Art Play palette has two folders. We have the papery in the first folder. And you can see that we have the artsy papers followed by the solid papers and if you've been following along with my videos you'll know that I do four different artsy papers and you'll see that I have brightened up some of these green tones with the brighter whites and I've balanced it with some textures so lots of paint textures in here and lace textures to really provide visual interest in the face of some of that moodiness that I suppose comes with these muddy green hues. So you can see I've added in a bit of light here and there too to add some visual interest. So these are great for landscape photos, but you really could incorporate any photos into these papers that have similar colors. So don't let the imagery deter you from trying out your heritage photos or some of your landscapes or, or your travel photos. And then of course you have your solid papers here which you can then combine with the transfers and overlays. And there are a variety of those. We've got some really fun kind of scribbly art strokes some paint layers and some stains. There's actually an art stroke in there if you can see at the top here. Some more transfers with that great texture 
kind of move along another stain this is designed to be placed over your paper with a color burn blending mode applied and it's going to add some intensity of color to your page a much larger transfer here with a variety of scratch textures in there we've got some paper textures some lace textures and again these are designed to be dragged and dropped onto your page using the move tool from the tools panel to create your own custom artsy papers and then of course we always have elements which are the dimensional elements and I provided a variety of these to really support the landscape. So I was thinking of the outdoors, perhaps some hiking, perhaps some camping, perhaps some travel. So we've got some nice leaf embellishments. We have some flower elements. This is a nice felt to bring in a different level of texture and then some different sort of weeds which are great really for a variety of pages and you can see I have included the elements in folders in PSD format and then the individual layers so that you can layer those up for those of you that are not working in Photoshop or elements I always try to accommodate those of you that are using different software programs and then finally we have the brush set so the splatters here and I'll be talking a bit more about splatters in the layout deconstruct but these are designed to be stamped on your page to add visual interest perhaps introduce a bright color to support splashes of those unsupported colors in your layouts and then they can also be used as a textual component especially when you apply blending modes to them there's a fun spray brush here and then various textures I like this paper texture with the paint in that sort of has a watercolor effect to it and there's a lace brush this would make a really great edge brush so you could stamp this either on the edge of your layout or peeking out from behind a photo the same with this I like the lines in here I think this would be a great corner brush to stamp behind a photo a framed photo and then um, some interesting lace meets tape textures so I'm a big fan of these textural style brushes to add interest to the solid areas of those papers so you can stamp them on a new layer in gray and then add different blending modes to really make them blend so again lots of different textures here I love the canvas texture on here and then the paint and then also the lace this could actually be used as a blending brush I think that that would be really interesting to impart some of this texture into a mask or even a custom blended photo and I really like the scratchy lines in this particular brush here this is a great blending brush I'm always a fan of any of these brushes that can impart texture and also blend your photos seamlessly into the backgrounds this particular set has two different brush sets because of the size of the brushes if the brushes are larger than 2500 pixels then I produce a secondary brush set for those people working in newer versions of Photoshop Elements and Photoshop CC. And then for the supporting products that go with the Artplay palette, we have the Artsy Layered Template, which essentially you just add your background paper and your photos and you can customize the title and the journaling. So super easy springboard to creating a digital artistry or scrapbooking page. And this is of course delivered in PSD format so that you have all of those individual layers accessible to you and what this means is is that you can then extract those layers individually to incorporate in other pages that you might design. We also have the Outdoors Word Art Mix, which includes a variety of different titles, word transfers, and white wood words. We also have a beaded threads, and then some brushes. The Word Art and the Word Transfers are made into brush format so that you can essentially create these really cool title clusters. And then we have two other products. We have the postage frames, which are really cool, 
what you do is you would go in and you can see I've included the layers both in PSD and layered PNG format. So what that means is, is that if you're working outside of Photoshop or Elements, you can simply layer up these layers to create your own frames, or you can bring the frame into your Photoshop workspace and then you simply just want to clip your photo to this frame layer. Go ahead and see if I can do that with one of Mikey's photos. So she has this photo here. I'm going to select the move tool from the tools panel and I'm just going to drag this over directly over that mask layer and if I go ahead and zoom out you can see that and then you go to layer create clipping mask and now you can see how that photo has been applied to that layer and if I wanted to add the remainder of that photo to the other layers then I would simply duplicate those layers drag them down to the next mask go to layer create clipping mask and then you can go ahead and duplicate that again drag those layers down to the third mask and then go to layer create clipping mask and then essentially you can select all of those layers and then with the move tool selected drag them onto your page and you can see now how you have this really cool stamp element I'm going to go ahead and close that out and then these stamped frames coordinate with the stitched frames. So all of these stitched frames coordinate with the stamped frames. And then you'll remember from the previous week's collection, we had these linear photo blends. And so these photo blends also coordinate with those postage frames and with the stitched frames. Now, the week after I release a collection, I always include artsy transfers and so these artsy transfers are essentially the layered versions of the transfers and overlays in the art play palette they're not exactly the same i often get asked if the artsy transfers are the same as the transfers and overlays and i always try to make them different in some way or include different ones and there's usually five included so if you can see, we have a variety of different transfers here. And then if I go ahead and I open up one of these transfers into our workspace, then you can see that the layers are represented in the layers panel. And these work very similar to the artsy cards in that you can turn off the visibility of these layers, you can change the color of these layers. So if I go ahead and select this green layer, for example, and then go to image adjustments, hue and saturation in Photoshop elements, that's enhance, adjust color, hue and saturation. Then this is what I was talking about by you being able to increase the saturation of those colors by moving the saturation slider. And you could also change the hue. So if you wanted a more reddish brown or perhaps a more blue color, then you could go ahead and do that. You could also change the lightness as well of that color. So lots of flexibility to be able to manipulate the color. You can mask layers, you can rotate some of these layers, you can move them around your canvas. So this is the beauty of incorporating these artsy transfers with the Artplay palette is, is that it can give you a lot more flexibility and I'll be going ahead and showing you how to use these in this layout by Mikey. So let's go ahead and close this out and let's transition into this page by creative team member Mikey Kruger. And so we had a bit of a sneak peek at this page when I incorporated the frames. But essentially, you can mix and match pieces from the Artplay palette with the Artsy Transfers collection. So let's go ahead and turn off all of the different layers. 
and she started her page with a solid layout foundation and that's my recommendation for using artsy transfers the artsy transfers are really designed to build your own custom papers and they provide a little bit more flexibility than just using the transfers and overlays that are included in the art play palette so it's sort of a an added extra that really kind of ups the fun and the visual interest and the flexibility and customization options that are available to you when designing with these products she then brought in her artsy transfer there's one on the side here so you can see this is number two and then she brought in if you take a look here a secondary artsy transfer so I'm going to go ahead and just switch this on and then just turn off the photo layer so you can see how she's built her foundation by adding in two of the transfers very simply just dragging those layers into her workspace and then she introduced her photos if I go ahead and switch this on you can see that she's added some effects to her tulip photo and then if you watch the artsy cards video from earlier this week then you'll see that the artsy transfers work in very much the same way and she actually dragged her photo down to the layer that she wanted to clip her photo to and then she went ahead and she clipped both of those layers to that transfer and if I go ahead and just open up this layout that I created I just kind of wanted to show you the foundation of what she did here so here is her artsy transfer and she added in two different photos so here's the original transfer and notice how that she's painted on one of these layers so there's this white area here which didn't exist in her original layout so she brought in her first photo and she clipped it to this layer and so in order to be able to view this part of the tulip here she kind of painted in with a soft round brush or a blending brush over this area and then she went ahead and she masked a portion of that let's go ahead and you can just see that so you can see there that how she's just masked the edge to blend it a little bit and then she brought in a secondary photo and she clipped that to this underlying layer here the stain layer and that just adds a little bit more intensity so that was her photo and then she grouped all of these layers together in a group and then she duplicated that group twice so notice when she duplicates it then it increases the intensity of her photo so that was the foundation so you can see here we have one group two groups and then three groups and that really creates a vibrant result and then she added in some brushwork. So you can see that she used some Music Notes number one brushes and she stamped those in white over her tulips to add some more interest. I really like the contrast of the white against the red and that also coordinates with the white background. And then she also added in this paper texture notice that by adding this paper texture she is guiding the eye and sort of connecting the dots leading the eye from this paper texture here to this one over here so if I go ahead and turn that off you can see the effect that that has by drawing the eye completely from one side of the page to the other she then went ahead and added in some word art and I really like her title treatment here. Notice how she added the quote. This is from Spring Word Art Mix number one. So a different collection. She's mixing and matching components from different art play palette collections here. She's stamped the title in white and added a drop shadow layer style can see that that makes the title look like it's popping off the page and then she's duplicated that title and she's just offset it slightly to create this really sort of fun reverse shadow effect and then she's added in some embellishment from some different art play palettes so she has this butterfly here from art play palette studious she has a button thread and then a button that comes with this particular art play palette 
And then she set off the entire piece by supporting it with some splatter brushes. And these are from the Artplay palette, from the Artsy Transfers Moira, and from the Splatters number no. four, which were released into the store last Wednesday. So notice how she has supported the red in her photo with the splatter here and really kind of brings the eye from one side of the page to another. She also has a dark brown splatter down here and she has a variety of white splatters. So you can see the white splatter down at the bottom here when I turn it off and then she has one at the top here. And this is a great way for me to demonstrate the beauty of using brushes with the paintbrush tool as opposed to using the PNG files. So if I select the top layer of my layers stack and I go ahead and I access the splatters brush set. So let's go ahead and bring in one of these brush files. I would simply just drag it into my workspace in Photoshop. If you're working in Elements or if you prefer to go to File, Open, and then navigate to where you have those brushes located, then you can go ahead and do that. Now you can rotate this brush, you can make it smaller if you want to, you can recolor it by going to edit, fill, ensuring you have that preserve transparency box checked, and then go ahead and select your color fill option and you can randomly sample a color from your layout or you can go ahead and choose a color whichever you prefer then click OK then you can recolor a brush that way and maneuver the brush and that's a perfectly acceptable way of using these brushes but if you load the brushes into your brushes panel you can do this by selecting the paintbrush tool from the tools panel going up to the top of your screen in Photoshop these options will be located at the bottom of your screen if you're working in Photoshop Elements and then you're going to access the import brushes and this is going to allow you to navigate to the ABR file that comes with each of the brush sets. You can go ahead and double click that or you can select it and then press load. I already have it in my brushes panel and again this will be loaded at the bottom of your screen if you're working in Photoshop Elements. This allows you to select any of these brushes here. So if I go ahead and select a brush for example, I can then go ahead and you can see the imprint. If you can't see the imprint, then press the caps locks key on your keyboard. So notice when I press it, it disappears. When I press it again, it reappears. And you always want to create a new layer when you're stamping a brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer. And then you can go ahead and you can perhaps sample a color from your layout. So I'm gonna sample this brown here. And the reason that you would use a brush is that it allows you to change the settings via your brushes panel in Photoshop or if in Elements that functionality is going to be located at the bottom of your screen. But you can see here how you can rotate your brush like this. You can flip your brush horizontally or vertically. You can increase the spacing of your brush if you wanted to create successive brush strokes. You can see I've created a couple there. It's more beneficial with perhaps paint brushes. Let's try this one, there you go. So you can see I can do multiple brushes if I want to. And then I have all of these different tools here where I can splice brushes by incorporating them together. I can scatter brushes. I can change all of these settings. And I go through all of these in my advanced brushes course, which is available at the Anna Aspinus Design Store at AnnaAspinusDesigns.com. So you just have a little bit bit of flexibility and to be able to manipulate that brush on the fly. So my preference is to use the brushes with the paintbrush tool, but again, it's really just personal preference to how you want to incorporate those layers. And then of course, once you've stamped it on your page, you can leave it as is, you can change the opacity, or you can go ahead and you can apply a blending mode. So notice how the color burn really allows that to kind of blend into the background and it intensifies some of the colors depending on how you place it. You could try different ones like hard light. You can bring up the opacity. 
you can try screen you can make that almost disappears these light and blending modes but you can really add some really cool effects by adding these different splatter brushes to your page so that's our layout for this week using the art play palette moira collection with the artsy transfers i'm going to head back into our folder and i wanted to just look at three more pages by the Anna Aspinus Designs team. This was one by Adrienne. And I had a question this week about how to incorporate artsy designs with a clean and simple style. So the advice that I gave to the artist that was asking the question was to use a solid background paper and ensure that you leave plenty of white space. This creates impact. And then you want to make sure that you use plenty of vertical and horizontal lines. So an easy way to do this is to add your photos to the frames. And I really like how Adrienne here has used the same photo twice but she's used different proportions of that photo the artsiness comes in with the more organic curved lines so notice how she has created tension by placing the stamp frames with this torn edge paper frame and then she's incorporated her photo with the artistry and then clipped all of those layers to the mask in this frame and then of course the dimensional element here adds a traditional and unexpected component to the layout and it also draws the eye to her focal point so super fun layout there and this one is pretty neat too this is another kind of simple clean page that falls within the realms of artsy margada has used one of the four by six artsy cards that were released this week in the Art Play Palette Moira collection. Notice how she has combined that photo with the artsy cards using the techniques that I shared in the video earlier this week and then she's just added some simple embellishments. So that would be my other tip to creating simple and clean pages using artsy designs is to not only ensure you have plenty of white space and solid backgrounds and the use of vertical and horizontal lines, but keep your processes and embellishment quite simple. The more you add to a layout, the more complex it's going to become. And then this one by Viv demonstrates the use of a photo inspired template. And these are great for showcasing a variety of different photos. Notice how you have a collage of different shaped rectangles and squares to which you can add your photos. And these are also great to accommodate both artsy cards and artsy transfers. I love how she's embellished the plants that she likes to photograph with the dried flowers from Art Play Palette Moira. And I like how she sets off the whole background with even more of the artistry. Small note here, notice how she's used the paint stains and she has extended the colors in her photo outward into the background by using those stain brushes. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Covered quite a bit here, a bit of a mishmash of information based on questions that I have received. I'm really loving the feedback and the connection with you. It really helps me to know what you want to learn and it gives me guidance to actually provide information that's useful to you. So if you have a few moments to comment, it certainly is a good way for other people to find my videos if you're commenting and leaving positive feedback. But I also take the negative feedback too. I'm here to learn in the same way as you are and improve my teaching skills and obviously to create products and education that you guys want to use. So please be vocal. Please reach out. I promise I don't bite. If you'd like to send me an email, then you can reach me at Anna at AnnaAspinusDesigns.com. And again, I will be back here in the space again very soon. Take care and I hope you enjoy the Art Play Palette Moira collection. Mm -hmm.